Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the Monster Mash Readathon reading vlog. I apologize for my appearance in this introduction. I'm really not feeling well and I haven't been for days, but it is now October 3rd and I still haven't started my Monster Mash Readathon, which I was so excited to do for the first 10 days of October. This is a readathon hosted by Hannah Blackwell, and I really wanted to try and do the hard mode board. Um, I don't know how that's going to work since I've already missed two full days of reading and I'm still not feeling very well, but I'm going to try my best. So my goal, I'm going to do things a little bit differently. I set up a wheel in my Tiny Decisions app with all of the spaces on the hard mode board. I want to spin this and I have a book chosen for each of the prompts and I want to keep this going and hopefully get at least one bingo. If I spin the wheel and get a prompt that I've already had, I'm going to use that as like a free space. I can look at the board and try and str strategically choose a book that will help me get, you know, a bingo on the board. Hi, Emmett. And I also am doing Spookopolathon, Becca's Bookopoly. That will be a separate reading vlog, but already my first role for that. I was able to fit in a monster romance, but my check-in will be in that vlog. But eventually you'll see an extra check mark on my bingo board over here. So there's going to be some overlap, uh, which will be a little tricky, but I hope it will still be fun. <laughs> Are you making silly faces? Okay, that's enough rambling from me. I also forgot to say, if you're new here, hello, my name is Emily. This is McGinnis Mama, where you will find mostly bookish content. And I'm hoping to read a lot of spooky books in October. So I hope you enjoy the reading vlogs I have planned. That's enough rambling. Let's spin the wheel and see what we get for our first pick. I have a lot of novellas set aside um, on Kindle Unlimited. Buddy, shh. Uh, but also some full length books. So I'll just have to see what we get. I'm hoping to continue some series that I've started in the past. I'm not gonna screen record because I'm using my work phone <laughs> to do the wheel. Shifter romance, that is super easy. I have quite a number of shifter um, series I've already started so I'm actually going to sneakily look at some page counts and probably choose the shortest one. I'm going to go choose a shifter book that will be quite easy to fulfill and I'll let you know what I choose and maybe check in at the same time because I'm hoping that we can get this reading vlog moving a little fast because I'm hoping to read a lot of books and so I can't do a ton of check-ins or this video will be way too long. Okay shifter book. Hopefully I can get some reading done today and start feeling better soon. Hey guys, excuse the towel on my head. I clearly just got out of the shower and washed my hair. I'm now a hundred pages in to rejection which I completely forgot to like come back with options. Um, so, okay, rewind. The first role I got was Shifter and I had kind of three ideas in my mind, the Mate Games, the Blackwater Pack series and the Immortals After Dark series. The Immortals After Dark series is a paranormal romance series that I own physically. And I was looking and the second book that is the one I need to read is focused on um, a vampire and a Valkyrie. So it didn't have the shifter in it. I mean, I'm sure they're present um, within the story, but they weren't the main focus. The Blackwater Pack series book I'm up to was over 500 pages, so I thought that'd be too much. So I landed on the Mate Games, book two, which is Rejection, and this is less than 400 pages, and I read through them really fast. So that is the one I went with. Now, my check-in, 100 pages in, uh, that's like a little more than 25% into this book. 
Whew. <laughs> this is too spicy to be reading on an early morning. I don't even remember what day it is right now. Um, <laughs> but I've been like blushing. It's spicy. And the first book, while there was definitely some spice happening, this is picking up right where book one left off. And we hit the ground running. Literally. <laughs> uh, we've had some major developments in the why choose relationships. This book number two is focused mostly on Kingston, whereas the first book was focused mostly on Noah. But I mean, all four of our male characters are involved in some way. But so far, it's been super spicy. I think that this there we go. This series is just so much fun. Um, I didn't really give a synopsis, but it's um, an academic setting because it's like a graduate program for key future leaders, maybe, of each group's. So like, Kingston here is set to be one of the top guys in the shift section <laughs> like within each of their species we have demigods fey vampires witches Ooh, that it would also check off the witch prompt like there's just all kinds of different paranormal species within here um and they're supposed to be older mid-20s like i said it's a graduate program but some of our characters do act very young sunday or main female character and um, Kingston specifically, but like this isn't my most favorite fantasy romance, paranormal romance series by any means, but I just have such a fun time reading them. And like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. I'm just having a great time. Um, I don't know if I can finish this today, but I definitely want to get a big chunk of this read today so we can roll again. Um, I have read a, I did finish, um, Burn for Jack. That was in my Spook Awfully Readathon vlog, but I did read that so far this month and that was for Pumpkinhead. But once again, I could check off Pumpkinhead, Ghost, and set on Halloween, those three prompts for that book. And that was less than 100 pages. So this is technically my second monster book. We'll just see how we're going. I do want to try and fit more shorter novellas on um, for the next rolls if possible. But this check-in was way too long. I'm having a great time. I'm going to go finish it, hopefully today, if not early tomorrow. This is what we're working with because it's very late at night. But I did finish Rejection by Kay Lorraine and Meg Ann. I keep calling her Meg Adams. I don't know why. I just... And this was for the shifter prompt. And so this is the second book in the Mate Game series. And these are a fun, silly, goofy time for a paranormal, why choose, yada, yada, yada. I've given you this this spiel before but <laughs> I don't know if I'm just like being cynical because the first book I just really thought it was fun 
the dialogue is so bad and so cringy. So just know that going into it. Um, she says things like, did someone put on their sappy pants today? Like, the dialogue is literally atrocious. But then there are moments that are like really beautifully written. Like in one of her dreamscapes, there was like this white mansion like lots of white marble white everything white furniture or like the furniture was covered with the white um like fabric over it and then her mother was there in blood red and it was like like she was cut in the bloody I don't know <laughs> I should have highlighted it but I was just like wow how does that writing fit in with what we're usually getting in here like just very small moments However, our main character, Sunday, is a shifter, hence the shifter prompt. And she goes in heat, as they do in these books sometimes. There was one moment with one of our four main characters, male, ma male main characters, that this heat was used as a coercion and dare I say, damn near sexual assault in order to like force him to finally do things with her. I was so disgusted by that chapter and her reactions after because he has a very negative uh reaction to the situation and i'm noticing that my case is breaking um and she just doesn't understand how he could possibly not be happy about what happened between them and it was just really gross so I do like I'm not DNFing the series. I don't think I'm gonna pick up pick up the next one like right away. So I think I'm gonna give it a two and a half star. But that also means I am ready to spin the wheel again. And I after that was like almost 400 pages. I really need a novella. I am very shiny. I've had my makeup on all day. Okay. Oh God. I don't want to screen record, you're just going to have to believe me. Gargoyle. This is good because Titan is on my TBR technically, like my actual October TBR for Roll the Dice, but it's a full length novel. Titan by Jillian Graves is 310 pages. I am going to read that, but I do want to spin the wheel one more time and maybe try and get a short novella to read in between. Uh, but I do want to read Titan for sure. Succubus. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to find a novella that involves a succubus. Read that first. And then read Titan. I'm not sure when I'm going to check in with you guys. I'm hoping I can find a succubus monster romance that is under 100 pages just to knock that out really fast. I'm having so much fun. Is this chaos? Definitely. Haven't loved everything, but I'm still having a really good time and the bingo board is just so much fun. Hello, good morning. I just got out of the shower. I'm about to do my makeup, but I wanted to give a tiny reading update for the two rolls I did last night. I did end up finding on Kindle Unlimited a succubus novella that was 22 pages. Um, I think I mentioned at the beginning of this vlog that I actually have a spreadsheet with options for all of the prompts on the bingo board. But Sam read one of the succubus ones and gave it two stars and the other two we had um, as options were over 300 pages each. I think I probably would have enjoyed them more, but I wanted to find something under 100 pages and the first one under 100 pages I found was actually 22 pages. So I was like, quick, knock it out, 
and move on to the next prompt. And it was Seduced by the Succubus by Freya Diamond. Zero stars. I gave it one star on Goodreads. Um, I'm the only person to have rated it. So sorry, Freya Diamond. This was not in subject matter. Because at the beginning of the book, I was like, oh, this is gonna be 22 pages really quick. We're setting this up really well. I'm intrigued. So we have this mage. They call him a mage, but he also seems um, like a part of the church, like a priest maybe, or like an apprentice to become a priest. I'm not really sure, like he's supposed to be celibate. Um, he has to atone for his feelings. <laughs> And, but there's magic in this world. And our mage fella summons a succubus somehow, semi-accidentally. Um, he's been like experimenting with some darker magic he's not supposed to. Like we are setting up a bit of a magic system, a bit of background for our characters, um, both our succubus, which I'm pretty sure our succubus was Lilith, like the very classic succubus demon. And then we have this mage guy and there's like some crossover, some things happening and they finally cross paths. I mean, finally it's on page like five, but the setup was there. After that, it was literally the worst writing I have ever, ever experienced. It was literal, literal copy paste sentences over and over again. Uh, like, <laughs> Let me see if I can, where's my examples? Please stop doing that. Slow, deliberate circles. Feeling the heat of her body against his. Her tongue danced with his. Like, copy paste, copy paste, over and over. Like, it literally didn't make any sense. And then once the spicy seduced by a succubus whatever thing all that went away at the end two three pages we're back with our mage who and he's atoning for like he doesn't tell anybody but like what he's done um with like prayer and stuff and then we're back with like a descriptive setting with things making sense and the magic like it just I was so confused. It didn't make any sense at all. Anyways, I give it one star. Whatever. Now we're doing Gargoyle, which I actually rolled first, but I knew I wanted to read a full length novel for this. So I'm reading Titan by Jillian Graves, the first book in the Romancing His Stone series, 300 pages. And I'm about 10% in. I just read a little bit this morning before I did my workout and shower. And I'm already enjoying it. The writing is fantastic so far. Our main, female main character, Jules, is a sugar baby. She's on the site. She goes on dates with older, wealthy men. Um, but there's already this behind the scenes, like fantastical artifact plot going on with Titan, who is our male main character, who is a gargoyle, but he can... Like when he, he meets Jules in a humanoid form, like his skin is very pale and she's like, he almost looks gray and his eyes are charcoal and his features look like they're cut from stone. You know what I mean? But he does have like a true gargoyle perched on the roof, wingspan, fangs form as well. And he is, this is called a gargoyle daddy dom romance. So. Jules is down on her luck, behind on all her bills. She was a child star and her manager and mother stole all of her wealth um, once she was no longer acting. So that's why she is a sugar baby. And Titan knows that Jules has dated, like, you know, um, this very wealthy man who has a lot of secrets and has something that he needs, or at least has knowledge for him to get what he needs. Um, so he goes on the site and hires Jules 
and he's promised to like take care of her he's very wealthy he keeps sending her money and i'm really enjoying it so far i don't know how like in on the cover um like you can see that she sees that he's a gargoyle he doesn't look like that right now i'm kind of intrigued on how that's all going to come together um but so far i'm enjoying it i'm only like 10 maybe 10 percent into the book and I hope to read a good chunk of that today but this is very promising so far and I need a win. Uh, Burn for Jack I really liked but as I keep mentioning that's going to be in the Spookopolathon vlog um, but it was a monster romance. I did like that one. I did not like the last two so this is my fourth monster romance for the month of October and so far I'm liking it. Hello. I have no idea if this um setup is going to work or if my phone is just going to tumble off the edge of my table. I am sick. I am not doing well. Excuse my appearance. However, I did finish Titan by Jillian Graves while I'm here eating my lunch, which tell me why salads take so much fucking effort to make. It's like chopping a little bit of a hundred different things out of my fridge to come up with this. I'm, it's grocery day today, so I had like some snap peas left, some tomatoes left, a little hunk of cheese left. Oh, that's half a chicken, or not even half a chicken breast, like a quarter piece of a chicken breast in there, and some lettuce. Like, it's just literally, there's some cucumber in here, the last bit of croutons that were in the pantry, like, <laughs> it's one of those salads where you're like clearing stuff out and it just took so long and I don't feel good. Now I'm resentful towards my salad. Anyways, here's what my um, bingo board is looking like right now. Doing okay. <laughs> Not super great. Um, I still, like I haven't, um, what am I trying to say? Like my sick brain. I didn't double up on any prompts is what I'm trying to get at. I'm giving this like three and a half stars. I actually really enjoyed this. The daddy dom trope while I think this is the first book I've read with that and I did enjoy it. <laughs> that seems like weird to say but there's definitely some like tropes that I like more than this and definitely some that I like less than this so that's fine. I feel weird talking about <laughs> kinks I like even though I've been reviewing romance books on this channel for so long. The gargoyle aspect was actually really interesting for a monster romance. I'm giving it three and a half stars. This had a lot of plot as well and the plot is going to continue on so this is going to be a series, the Romancing His Stone series. This one follows Titan, the next one follows Rook, and it was supposed to come out in September, but it didn't, so I'm not sure when it's going to come out, but I'm actually intrigued to continue on with this series because the plot was interesting and I liked the characters. There's one aspect of the plot I wish we kind of like closed a little bit better, but in the epilogue it alludes to like our female main character Jules is just like not ready to deal with it so when she's ready but the next books follow different couples so I don't know if we're still going to be seeing Jules and Titan in book two I don't know there was character development in here I really enjoyed it but it just wasn't my favorite and it was actually much better written than I was expecting so maybe I will give that a I'm gonna give it a four on Goodreads. It doesn't quite feel like a four is like I really loved this book but probably not going to reread it maybe. I don't know. Three and a half, four stars, somewhere around there. But I do want to spin the wheel again and like I mentioned before if I spin a prompt that I've already done um, it will be kind of like a free pick. Now let me pop up the board again and see I can see myself going like straight across the top because down the center line like ogre I'm not too fussed about. I really would probably die if I had to read a spider or a snake romance. I should knock on wood for that. 
on the four legs kind of creeps me out as well. So, I don't know. I'm not feeling too confident about really any of my paths right now. I'm not going to um, screen record because I'm too lazy. Oh, so that's Gargoyle again, which is what I already had. So that means I can choose what I want. And I think I'm going to go either Undead or Tentacles because I feel like I can get a short one. Yeah, I'm going to go for like if I have my own choice across the top because I think that's going to be easiest for me. So I'm going to look for something short because I need to knock out this reading vlog. I need to reference my monster book spreadsheet. So Undead, Why Choose, which those are typically longer and I don't mind that they're longer. I just don't think I'm ready for that right this second. I want to knock something else out. Undead or Tentacles. That's what I'm rambling about. Okay. All right. I have looked at my monster spreadsheet and actually the first one under um, the undead, I have live, laugh, lick, like, L-I-C-H by Kate Pryor. And, and it is under 100 pages. It's 87 pages. The reviews are all over the place. I'm seeing a lot of two stars from people I follow. I see a, lot, um, a four star from Ava Reads Romance um, and some other YouTubers I really watch, really enjoy watching have it as to read. So it is short. I guess I'm going to go for this. It says some people have monsters for a boss, but not everyone has an undead necromancer lord at the office. Lily has been the... I need to look up how to pronounce. Lich. Lich. Not even close. Lily has been the lich's secretary ever since his evilness took over the company. She loves her job, but she's got some questions about her boss, like what's under that cloak of ever billowing. Her wondering intensifies one day. The lich needs something from her that isn't just scheduling appointments. Okay. Office monster romance with light comedic elements. 87 pages. I actually, I'm looking forward to this. I thought it was going to be a bit weirder than what it sounds like. Monster office romance. I am going to go try and knock this out today. The migraine is setting in. I need to finish my food and do my grocery pickup. I cannot handle the grocery store today, so I definitely ordered that online. Uh, wish me luck. Hopefully I'll be better by the time you're actually seeing this video, but right now I am not feeling good. <laughs> Smiley face on it and then little shapes on the top one. That's a good idea. Smiley face and shapes. Oh, what? Masks didn't last long. What is it? What is it's it? two skeleton hands forming a heart shape. Careful you don't fall off the edge. <laughs> Hello. I have finished Love Laugh Lich by Kate Pryor. I cannot believe 
that I've only read five monster romances so far. I feel like I need to rectify that and hopefully get a bingo on the board. Here is what my bingo board is currently looking like. Oops, that's not my password. Um, I'm two away um, in two different areas. Now, I read Live, what? Love, Laugh, Lich for the Undead prompt. It also would have worked for Beast. Um, also would have worked for Multiple Heads if we were talking eggplants. Um, I still have not like doubled up because I feel like I would have a lot of things checked off if I did that. Yeah, earlier today we went on a jack-o'-lantern walk thing. Um, the kids wore their Halloween costumes. That was a lot of fun. I've just insert inserted a little clip for that. I'm going to stop rambling. Let me review this. So this is under 100 pages. I give it three stars. I, I found it enjoyable. It was a quick read. I had fun, but I definitely had some issues with it. First of all, this is a workplace romance. Um, the Lich is her boss. He is like an undead, um, the Dark Lord. He would count as beast because he has like a lion's mane, leathery hide, animal like legs. Um, I think he has a tail, claws, um, like very beast like, and he has three. But I rolled it for, or I chose it for undead, so that's what I'm going with. It is like a corporate America esque. Um, workplace. There's HR. They talk about NFTs. One of her co-workers is concerned with her drawn on eyebrows and her eyebrow pencil. And yet, like, our main character is the overlord's secretary. And, like, she writes with quills and ink. So, like, there are things with the world building and, like, talking about economic collapse and this, like, the dark rain has started. Um, there are things that just don't make sense world building wise, which is less than a hundred pages, but if you're, so we don't have time to spend on world building, but at least what you provide should make sense. Also, I'm so over our virginal female main characters. She's a virgin. She's never been kissed before. So her first time, of course, is with the lich with three like, that just, <laughs> does that make sense to you? Because doesn't make sense to me. That seems advanced <laughs> in my mind. Okay, somehow my phone is full and I don't know why I keep deleting stuff and it's not getting any better. I have four minutes of camera time left. So, wow, that's really blown out. Let's see what we get this time. Minotaur. I've already read Morning Glory Milking Farm. So I'm not sure if there's a short Minotaur book that I know of. I will let you know what I choose. <laughs> wow, this lighting is atrocious. Okay, making this quick, I'm choosing another very short one because I really just want to get bingo at this point. This is Wed to the Minotaur by Eden Ember. It is less than 100 pages and it is part of a like interconnected standalone series, The Arranged Monster Mates. So if the writing is good then I could choose maybe other books in the series um, to help me complete my board. The other one I was really interested in, but it's like 300 pages, is Mantras and Minotaurs, but it's book three in the Leviathan Fitness. Can you see? Oh, there we go. Leviathan Fitness series by Ashley Bennett. And I actually read an Ashley Bennett monster romance before, the demon one, and like actually liked it. A lot and so I do want to start the Leviathan Fitness series but I think I want to read that series in order because I do think I will actually like it and 
with series I typically like to read them in order but this type of series where it's like less than 100 pages and all separate um, this is fine I don't even know which number Wood to the Minotaur is but I don't think it's the first one so I'm gonna read that it's 100 pages I hope to knock that out tonight and I'll do another roll and I might just do just one more roll actually having such a fun time with these crazy monster romances and I'm mixing them in with uh, the other books I'm currently you reading, Akuma, and a nonfiction book. So you this has been fun and a perfect way you to incorporate like spooky reads without them being thrillers. Hey guys, for Minotaur, as I mentioned before, I chose Wed to the Minotaur by Eden Embers. This is quite a large. Um, arranged monster mate series written by many authors. <laughs> I didn't do any check-ins because this was less than 100 pages so I just wanted to kind of like binge through it. This was not good. I gave it a generous two stars on Goodreads because I read through it really quickly and it held my attention but like the writing itself was bad and this was like the most contradictory story I have ever read in the sense that facts like weren't re like didn't remain consistent if that makes sense even within the same chapter so we're following Oren who this is like a post-apocalyptic world there are aliens on earth um, and everyone is kind of like in zones so she has been matched DNA wise as a good match for Vrakius or however you pronounce his alien name. He's a Minotaur and they really like drive home that they are humanoid. They look just like a human man except for with horns. She is like super hesitant to be matched. She doesn't want to leave home yet though she is the eldest daughter. They have three daughters who they're trying to match off. And her mother is like, nope, you're going. We're shipping you off. It'll be easier if you're not here. But we want what's best for you. You will thrive with your freedom. But really, we can't afford to feed you, so you need to go. But it's for the best. Like, the mother's personality was not consistent through the book either. Um, they drove home how poor they were, how oftentimes they had to select certain people in the family to eat that day. And yet... All of the daughters had these beautiful gowns um, that their mother bought for them for when they're matched. She was really hesitant to go. As soon as she left the house and got on the train to begin her travel, she was like super excited and eager. Rakius, when he meets her, he wants to get to know her first before just being feral because he's so like progressive I guess for a minotaur he just takes her anyways the portrayal of losing your virginity was so disgusting in here and also contradictory in the time so there's a lot of very specific examples of time in this book for example she has been put on this bus she drives for one hour she gets off the bus and wants to go home starts walking and gets picked up by a hitchhiker but then goes on about how she was traveling for days why does it take days to walk back after well she didn't even walk back she got to drive after only driving in one direction for one hour and there's another example where she's visiting at another place and Rakius comes and gets her and it takes them hours to get home but then when the reverse happens when they invite those people to their home they said we'll be there in half an hour like if you're going to be so specific about time it needs to remain consistent i just i did not like it the writing was not good and yet i binge read the entire thing also hi nice to see you i haven't been filming this vlog for weeks. It is now November. Yeah, this readathon was for October 1st to October 10th. My October did not go well, so I read that today, a little bit yesterday, and I read it today, and I'm updating you now. 
I have let go of the notion of getting a bingo, but I am going to roll my wheel one more time, read one more monster romance, because I feel like I didn't read enough, like as much as I wanted to in October. I'm going to stop rambling. I'm hoping I can get another novella. I'm going to roll one more time. I'm not going to get bingo. Um, this is what my board's looking like. I forgot to say I'm not set up for bingo anywhere. If I roll something I've already gotten, I get to choose. I did remove Snake and Spider and Gargoyle from my wheel because I got Gargoyle, Gargoyle twice already. So I read a Gargoyle monster romance and I chose one. And I cannot do Spider or Snake. I can't do it. So I removed those. Um, let's just see what we get. I wish I read more monster romance in October. I'm really disappointed with my readings. That is Jack-o-lantern, which technically I read Burn for Jack. Pick a space. It could be anything because I'm not going to get a bingo. Let me see if there are any books I really want to read. I might actually, I've decided I'm choosing Vampire because my friend Steph Lyons said I really needed to read The Hot Vampire Next Door by Nikki St. Crow. 144 pages vampire romance that apparently is very good and that doesn't get me anywhere closer to bingo but that's what I'm choosing and that's going to be my last read for this vlog that's what I'm doing I'm actually very excited about that and then I can focus on finishing up some of my other reading vlogs that are also falling behind all the content for this channel is behind I have so many like in progress things I just need to finish. So, okay, I'm gonna go read The Vampire Romance. I'll let you know how much I like it. I'm actually, I have really high hopes for this one. I think it's going to be quite spicy and good. And then we will close out this vlog. Okay, feeling good. Hi guys. I'm embarrassed to say how long it's been since I did this reading vlog, but I'm editing it now. I need to close it out so I can finally put it on my channel. October was a really shitty month for me. I got sick, things going on in the personal life, all of that. So I was not able to complete the Monster Mash readathon the way I wanted to do it. But I'm ready to close it out. I have one last book I wanted to share with you, which is Hot Vampire Next Door by Nikki St. Crow. This says season one on the top. It's the first of many books. I don't even know how many are in the series. I was recommended this by my friend Steph Lyons and I really liked it. I gave it four stars. It's 140 pages and one of the oldest vampires lives next door to our main character, Jesse, and there's a bit of like a mystery situation going on, and I'm really intrigued to continue this, honestly. I feel like 140 pages wasn't quite enough, but I'm happy I have more books in the series to like move on to. I'm really curious on what's happening in this town that they live in. There are supernatural creatures and humans. There's vampires, shifters, witches. Maybe that's it. And they kind of self-govern, like they're kind of in sections. The witches don't want the vampires coming into their stores. You're not allowed to cross over into the shifter territory, etc. And I just, I found it really fun. It is urban fantasy. It's set like in this town um, where they live. It's like just a suburb. Um, yeah, I can't like say too much about it because it's only 140 pages and we do get started right away. There are, there's spice in here. I think it was done really well and not too like overhanded, if that makes sense. Um, one thing, <laughs> Our, main, our female main character at the beginning of the story is our virgin, which I'm just kind of so tired of, you know? Does every single female main character need to start out a virgin and get railed by an ancient supernatural being? Or old fae, you know? Um, yeah, 
I really enjoyed this. So after reading Vampire, which I chose my own space because I knew I wanted to read that, this is what my Monster Mash bingo board is looking like if I don't double up. Now I did go through and double up. So for example, the pumpkin head story I read would also count for um, like set on Halloween. The shifter one I chose, which was uh, rejection, also counted as Y2. So if I do that, this is what my board looks like. And I could have gotten bingo if I read one more book, but I am just done. We're midway through November now. I failed at this readathon and I just don't care to get bingo anymore. I am really disappointed in my participation of this readathon because I was super excited, but shit kind of hit the fan uh, at the end of September. So then when this readathon, my hair is doing something weird. When this readathon started on October 1st, I was already kind of like in this whirlwind and it's also just a busy time in general. So those are my excuses. I did read, was it seven monster -y romance books over this last month or so and I had a really fun time. I'm not even truly ready to like let go of them. I still need to complete Spookopolathon as well so I'm hoping to maybe um, get more witchy or vampire like books in there before officially switching into more holiday cozy heartfelt reads. I'm still kind of in like dark romance or thriller, horror, like I'm still in that mood. So keep an eye out for the next reading vlog you'll see will be the Spookopolathon. And I do hope to read some more autumnal, spooky fall reads in there. Yeah, I'm so sorry to Hannah Blackwell and the other co-hosts for this readathon for my failed participation because I was so, so excited. Um, but maybe the next one, I will actually have my shit together and be able to participate more fully. But I did read a lot of really fun books and I also read a lot of really bad books in this reading vlog. So I hope you enjoyed it. Even though it is super disjointed, I'm going to finish editing it and get it up for you today. Bye!